Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. What are some little known relationship green flags? I feel like there's a lot of detailed examples that largely boil down to two things, empathy and emotional maturity. It's sad that those two are so often lacking, that people become surprised by it. Yeah I wonder how rare it is to actually find these two very important attributes. From my experience the more damaged you are the less you recognize them. Being able to emotionally connect even after an argument. Or during, I have friends that love having intellectual battles between themselves, it's how they connect to each other and express their love. I can relate to this I enjoy having intellectual arguments. Absolutely. During the beginning of our relationship, whenever my partner and I would argue, he would try to hold my hand, rub my arm, or hug me as we talked. When I'm wound up, I feel like I need space to think, like physical space, so I would always push him away. We'd always get to a point in our arguments where he would just shut down or walk out of the apartment, and I couldn't figure out why. I thought that he just didn't care enough to talk these things out with me. Finally I learned that physical touch is a big part of his love language, and that was what he needed during forward slash after our fights to feel emotionally connected with me. Since then, when one of us gets upset, we hold hands and talk things out. It's a weird small thing that's made a huge difference in our relationship. Honesty. Genuine interest in each other's hobbies, don't have to do them, but at least support it. Strong communication. You feel like you're hanging out with your best friend except you wanna smash. Bold of you to assume I don't wanna smash my best friend. Smashing the homies ain't gay if you are wearing socks. The ability to coexist in very companionable silence. A friend of mine once said when silence is not cringe, the friendship is real. My dad always told me all I needed to do to make friends was to be okay at talking, good at listening, and excellent at shutting the fuck up. You don't feel like they are playing games. Communication is direct and you don't feel too nervous about what you should or shouldn't do or say, and you're not worried about what they do or don't do or say. Some butterflies is normal, of course. Edit. To clarify, my point here is it's possible to meet someone who, right from the beginning, you're not overly concerned about your interactions. You don't have to think too much about what to text them or when, same with calls. They don't leave you wondering about when they will respond to you and what delaying means. They don't say or do cryptic things that you have to go home and call in a panel of friends to Ollie's. This not to say that, in the beginning, you shouldn't take care to be on your better behavior and not to oversharey. This is not game playing, it's being considerate. Cheesy but true, communication in a relationship is like cell phone service. Lose it, and you start playing games. Or searching for a better provider. I drink a lot of water and sometimes my BF would stay until late and I would fall asleep. Before leaving he always made sure I had a glass full of water on my nightstand in case I woke up thirsty. It's always the small details. Edit, I drink a healthy amount of water, thank you for your concern lol. My boyfriend does this too. I'm never without a water glass. If he walks by and it isn't full, he fills it up. I don't know how to tell you this, but I think you're dating a server. No matter how angry you are at one another. You will still go out of your way or they go out of their way to help. I'll be wicked pissed, but I'll angrily make my wife her favorite dinner even though I don't want to eat. No matter how angry we are at one another, usually only last a short period of time, we will never sabotage or try to teach them a lesson. Many times, it ends up being both apologizing to one another. Arguing and getting angry is just part of a relationship and unavoidable. It is how you deal with it that sets it apart from a healthy relationship versus a bad one. Edit, thanks for the reward thingies. There is never any harm telling someone you love them. I remember the time I was pissed at my so and then she accidentally spilled some sauce on her lap and I angrily helped her clean it up with my hanky. And you don't think anything of it. I love the mental image of you angrily stirring, muttering under your breath as you carefully measure ingredients and punch in the settings for the oven, just filled with fury, crossing your arms tightly over your chest as you glare at the food while it cooks. That is pretty accurate. I had to laugh when I saw your comment. Yup, that's me. I'm chuckling at the mental image of angrily cooking a meal. Use my razor without asking her rumph. Tell me I'm becoming my dad. I'll show you. Now, where'd I put the frick eye basil? Fucking make you the best goddamn spaghetti you ever had. 
We'll see who's being unreasonable. Unreasonable, maybe. Unseasonable, never. Listening to you and remembering the things you've said. Back when me and my boyfriend started dating, he'd sometimes bring up things that I've said before, X, my favorite foods, candies, etc. Made me super happy and could tell he genuinely cared. I'm so bad at remembering details like this. I've started to record them in my phone for friends and partners and it enables me to be so much more thoughtful. For example, a friend of mine mentioned that two of her favorite desserts were cannoli and cake. So for her birthday I made her a cannoli cake. She was so touched and didn't remember saying it so it came across as very insightful haha. ETA, I'm so glad that my most upvoted comment is about my most fiercely kept secret in my friendships haha hopefully it helps all of you out. My ex once tagged me in a post about a strawberry shortcake birthday cake. She forgot about it and nobody had ever done anything nice for, so she was blown away when I bought one for her birthday almost a full year later. A few months later she was eating a maple bar doubt and casually mentioned she wished she could have a whole maple doubt cake. So the next year on her birthday I took the day off of work and when she came home I had baked a whole maple doubt cake, I'm not a baker but that cake was amazing. Of course she still thought I didn't love her because I never did anything for her. She said that kind of stuff was baseline relationship stuff and I never went above and beyond for her. Poor girl was so broken she couldn't accept love. My last boyfriend only remembered things if he could throw them in my face at the most inappropriate times to win entirely unrelated arguments, and otherwise never remembered anything about me. God how I've missed sanity. When your so takes criticism from you seriously without immediately trying to turn it back on you. If the converse is also true, you too stand a great chance of going the distance. I think it's important to realize that this is where you can be out the gate, or it's somewhere you can get to. My wife reacts very poorly to criticism, not because she can't stand to have flaws in her behavior pointed out, but because she feels that when I criticize her actions, I'm telling her that she's garbage and in a day or two I'll be telling her to move out. That's a direct effect of her upbringing, and what's important is that she recognizes the issue for what it is, and we talk about it. It's made us so much better. This is amazing advice for any of the green flags in this thread. People come with their own experiences but they aren't set in stone. Honest communication and working together on challenges is huge. Active listening. Not just being there while you talk, acutely giving opinions, advice if asked for, and generally caring for the conversion. Bonus, active listening during an argument. Not trying to win, but trying to resolve the problem. Edit, grammar. This is super important, but also the polar opposite is important. Being able to comfortably sit together in complete silence for prolonged periods is a good green flag. The best relationship I had was when we both fell asleep on the couch watching TV, and I woke up with her literally using me as a full body pillow. Of course, I couldn't move until she woke up and suffered from muscle cramps and pins and needles for about three hours. But the fact that she slept through the night was a milestone in the relationship, and I wasn't going to move until she woke up. Later, she began teleporting into bed after falling asleep because I learned better positioning and leverage. Non-sexual compliments. You taste good. You smell different when you're awake. Not really sure if this counts because we're not in a relationship, but last fall semester, my friend asked if I could help her with something. I hadn't seen her in a while, and while I was talking to her she said you got new glasses. I said yes. They really suit you. It honestly made my day. Compliments really go a long way. Friendships are relationships too. Being able to have healthy conflict without fear that conflict will cause the end of the relationship. It's green flag, and a relief, to have natural disagreements and communication about those disagreements without constant fear that someone's going to hit the nuclear option. Edit, also doctoring my coffee and bringing it to me in bed was a smaller green flag. Edit 2, doctoring meaning putting cream and sugar in, and thank you for the awards and gold reddit friends. Underrated comment. Also, no matter how pissed off you are at e forward slash o, you're still supporting, respectful, and considerate of one another. Edit, for clarification, e forward slash o equals each other. And thanks for the gold, fellow Redditor. Laughter. And also, I've been with my partner for 40 years, this month. And I still smile when I see him across a room. He still makes me laugh and my heart soars when I think of him. 
Awesome. And congratulations to you both. Been with my wife almost 10 years now, and she always tells me how she loves that I make her laugh at least once every day. I hope she still says the same thing 30 years from now. Your partner does things for you without asking and remembers little details. For example I like eating with a fruit fork, the smaller version of the dinner fork, I actually googled that since our family calls them the little forks lol. Anyway, my partner remembers this and will grab it for me when we're dishing up food. Another good one is they make you feel appreciated. Edit. It may be a cake fork or salad fork. Um gee same here. My fiancé always grabs me the little forks, or as I like to call them, normal forks. She prefers the monster forks. Regardless, it's such a simple, simple, nothing gesture that shows she's listening and she cares. Marrying that wonderful person this Saturday. Edit been working all day and just checked in. Thank you all for the well wishes. We are super excited. Not the wedding we had envisioned when we got engaged, but it's going to be perfect. Congrats. Sounds like you two are made for each other, but it's not like you need a random 16-year-old telling you that lol. Damn, imagine getting this much karma on a burner account. <laughs>